have too many kids in the hall. Hey, y'all. Ooh, what's that smell? Oh, it's my new facial cleansing spray. You like it? Man, I could smell that spray before I even walk in here. And your skin is still very much, um, unclear. Anyway, go buy me a bottle of water from the vending machine. I gotta stay hydrated. Boy, I'm not going back out there with all them kids. You gotta give me a dollar for some chips and a drink and another dollar just for going back out there. Good morning. Y'all smell that spray in the hallway? Yeah, it's Matt's facial spray or whatever. Actually, I don't even smell it anymore. Have you ever sprayed a lot of air freshener in a bathroom? When did he even get here? Does it just stay in that bathroom? No. Eventually, you'll smell traces of it in other rooms nearby. And if you go back there after some hours, you won't smell anything. And that's because systems in our universe prefer to return to their normal balanced state. Just like your body. Your body has a normal and balanced state with several conditions that it thrives under. The temperature needs to be 98.6 degrees. Your blood should have a certain pH. Your brain should receive a certain amount of oxygen. Those are the normal balanced states. And we call this homeostasis. The cells in your body play a huge role in maintaining that balanced state by monitoring what goes in and out of your cells. And this is called cell transport. And the cell or plasma membrane does this. Do these long chains of hydrogen and carbon look familiar to you? Oh, those are lipids. Good, you remember. She wasn't even in this class when we learned that. The plasma membrane or cell membrane is a bilayer made of phospholipids that have hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails. Now this causes it to act a little stuck up and it picks and chooses who can come in and who cannot. This is called being selectively permeable. Ah, uh, so it's picky and exclusive like a Benny. Boy, shut up. Well, yeah, but it also depends on the amount of substances that are present. This is called concentration. Think about how when you were in that crowded hallway, you were dying to get inside the classroom. But if I asked you to go back out into the crowded hallway, you needed to be bribed with money to go back out there. <laughs> so there are two types of cell transport. Passive transport requires no energy, no type of bribery, right? And it always moves from high to low concentrations or down its concentration gradient. This is called diffusion, but active transport requires energy, right? Some bribery because active transport moves from low to high concentrations. Okay, makes sense. Molecules prefer to move from high to low. So like if there was a bunch of glucose outside the cell and we needed it inside the cell, it would just move across the membrane. Yeah, like if we needed a bunch of sodium inside our cells because we didn't have any, it would just come across the membrane from high to low, okay. Nope, nope, not too fast, hold on. Wait, I thought you just said. I know. Molecules prefer to move from high to low, but this is still the picky and stuck up semi-permeable membrane we're talking about. Anything just can't go across. Large and polar molecules cannot go across the membrane by simple diffusion. Using what you know about the structure, why would polar molecules not be able to cross the membrane? Oh, the, the tails are hydrophobic. Yes, sir, there we go. What's more accurate to say is they're non-polar. They're not charged. Wait, so we just don't get those molecules in ourselves? Like, we need them though. Right, and they just need some help. And that help is facilitated through a variety of proteins that are embedded in the membrane layer. We call this process facilitated diffusion. So let's clear this up and make it a little bit easier. Passive transport requires no energy to move molecules from high to low concentrations via diffusion. This diffusion will be simple diffusion if those molecules are small or nonpolar, like carbon dioxide or oxygen gas. Now, water molecules can do this too, since they're small enough. The diffusion of water across a membrane is called osmosis. But since it's polar, sometimes it has a hard time doing that, so it'll have to go through channels, which is similar to facilitated diffusion, which occurs with mainly large or polar molecules. Let's say we need that sodium to get out of our cells, but there's already a high concentration outside. It's just like getting you to go back into that crowded hallway, right? 
Huh, yeah, somebody needs to run me my vending machine money. <laughs> exactly. This takes energy. Active transport requires energy to move from low to high concentrations. And it can do this via special protein pumps. A well-known example is the sodium-potassium pump, using ATP to move sodium and potassium in and out of the cell. And the cell can use energy to make substances exit via exocytosis or let them enter via endocytosis. Okay, well, can I exit to get a bottle of water, please? I need to stay on my hydration routine. You know you can die from drinking too much water, right? Stop trying to sabotage my skincare routine, please. Well, it's actually true, and it has happened before. It deals with what we're learning today. All of your cells exist surrounded by fluid, which consists of water, the solvent, and many other substances in it, which can be called solutes. Depending on the concentration of the solutes, that is going to determine where water will flow during osmosis. This osmotic pressure is known as tonicity. Let's look. Which solution contains more solute? Solution A or solution B? Um, solution A. Okay, and therefore solution B has less solute. Which solution contains more water? Uh, solution B. Okay, right, and solution A has less water. Now let's say we have actual percentages here. So here's a cell that is 80% water and 20% solute. Based on what you've learned about osmosis and concentration gradients, would water move into this cell or out of this cell? It, it would move out. Why? Because there's less water outside and more inside and water moves from high to low concentrations. Okay, why was there less water in the solution? Oh, because it had more solute in it. Absolutely. So a solution with a higher concentration of solute is called a hypertonic solution. So if a cell was placed in it, it would shrink. A solution with a lower concentration of solute is called a hypotonic solution. If a cell was placed in it, it would swell or possibly burst. We want the cells in our body and the solutions surrounding them to be about here. Ah, balanced in equilibrium. That looks like a good state of homeostasis. Who says that? Nobody goes around saying stuff like that. True, well, isotonic solutions contain an equal concentration of solute in the solution to the cell. And this causes the cell to remain unchanged because we'll have a balanced rate of osmosis. So water will be equally flowing in and out, causing it to stay the same. Now let's say I get on your skincare routine and I decide to drink a bottle of water every two minutes for about two hours. Examine the percentages of solvent and solute outside of the cell. This means this solution outside is now hypertonic, hypotonic, or isotonic. Oh, it's hypotonic. How do you know? Because there's a low amount of solute outside the cell. I always remember it because like low and hypo, get it? Like it sounds the same. Okay, and as a result, what would happen to the cell? Would the cell shrink, remain the same, or swell? Uh, it would swell. Oh yeah, because it's a high amount of water outside and a low amount inside, and water's gonna move from high to low. And not only could they swell, they may burst. And think about that happening not once or twice, but a hundred thousand times all over your body in a matter of seconds. Okay, maybe I'll chill out. Yeah, your skin is, should be the least of your worries. You need to be worried about that breath or these clothes. Clothes? Girl, you've been wearing the same okay, clothes Okay, you have to. I haven't seen a new wardrobe from you in like a million uh, years. We know we need food to get energy from macromolecules so that reactions can occur inside the many structures of our cells. But nothing would be inside of our cells without the plasma membrane. Thankfully, it is picky, which helps to save us from so many complications that we could face from dehydration or too much sodium intake. 
It's all working to keep our bodies balanced and maintaining homeostasis so that we can live, survive, grow, and reproduce. Thanks for watching and, and stay tuned. Fake Jordans you got on. I'm selectively permeable and your negativity is not going to affect me today, okay? <laughs> you know, I like that.